In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the order of operations. This is an important principle in arithmetic. And I'm also going to show you the importance of spacing in Python and the importance of parentheses. And you will see the difference between spacing, which is used for visualization, and parentheses, which is used for grouping. So let's begin with this equation here. 4 plus 3 times 2 minus 1 equals what does it equal? Now, it may seem strange that I don't already know the answer because this seems like it should be a pretty trivial arithmetic equation. However, there's multiple ways that we can interpret this. So we can get very different answers depending on how we group these numbers, these arithmetic operations together. For example, if we would group together 4 and 3, that would give us 7 times 2 minus 1 equals 13 because 7 times 2 is 14 minus 1 is 13. Or we could group together the 3 times 2 that would give us the 4 plus 6 from 3 times 2 minus 1 and then 4 plus 6 is 10 minus 1 is 9. Or we could group together the 2 and the minus 1 and that gives us 1 so then we have 4 plus 3 times 1. And now here we could either group the 7, the 4 plus 3 times 1, or the 3 times 1 plus 4. So in this case, because this is a 1, it ends up working out to 7 either way. Okay, so it seems like there is some ambiguity, and this isn't good. We have the same collection of numbers. We shouldn't be able to get very different answers like this. Now it turns out that the correct answer in this case is this one here. The correct answer is 9. We group together the 3 times 2 and that takes priority over the addition and the subtraction. So how do I know that this is the right answer and this is the wrong answer? Well that is because of the order of operations. So this is the order of operations. Parentheses come first, they take precedence over all the other operations and then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. Now, this seems like it's a really difficult list to memorize, and that's why we have these little shorthand memory tricks, or mnemonics. So we have P-E-M-D-A-S. Some people will remember this by PEMDAS, and some people remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and so on. So now when you look at this equation, you see there's addition, but addition is all the way here in the back. Then there's multiplication, which is comes before addition, and then subtraction, which is all the way at the end. So we have to do the multiplication first, because that comes first in this order of please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And that gives us 4 plus 6 minus 1. And then there's a question of whether we should group 4 plus 6 or 6 minus 1. Now, in this particular case, with these numbers, it turns out it doesn't matter. You can do 4 plus 6, that gives you 10, minus 1 is 9, or you can say 6 minus 1 is 5, plus 4 is also 9. So in this particular case, it works either way. However, the correct order is to group the plus signs together, and that's because of this. Ant comes before Sally. All right, so let's switch to Python and see how this gets implemented. And in particular, I want to show you how to use parentheses to basically override any other order. The first thing I want to do is confirm that without applying any parentheses, I'm going to be able to reproduce the answer that I claimed was correct in the slide. Because it's one thing for me to say that some mathematical equation is true, but it seems much more convincing when a computer does it. So let's say print, and I'm going to say, so that was 4 plus 3 times 2 minus 1. All right, so now we get 9. And now I would like to show you that spacing actually has no effect whatsoever. So when I wrote it out here, I put spaces between each number and each operation. But I'm going to say 4 plus 3. And then with spaces everywhere else. Maybe I'll even do it here as well. 2 minus 1. So now when you as a human look at this line of code, what you see, what your brain is doing, is grouping together the 4 plus 3, and it's grouping together the 2 minus 1. And those are separated by multiplication. 
So in your mind, you might be thinking that this should now be 7 times 1. However, when we run this code again, we still get 9. So the point here is that spacing is really important for humans, for you looking at your code and for other people to be able to interpret your code and read your code. However, the computer, Python, doesn't care about spaces. You can have as many spaces as you want, like this, and Python is going to completely ignore all of these spaces here. However, we can override everything using parentheses. So remember, parentheses was the first order of operations in please excuse. So now I put 4 plus 3 in parentheses. And now, okay, I'll get rid of a little bit of this spacing. Just It's a bit excessive here. Okay, so now we have 4 plus 3 times 2 minus 1. So now we get a different answer. And let's see if we can figure out why we get this answer here. So this comes because we say 4 plus 3. Now this gets grouped together. So this is 7. And now what gets grouped over here? So we still have the multiplication. So actually, Python is grouping together the 7 times the 2. So this gets run next. And 7 times 2 is 14. And then we say uh, minus 1 is 13. So again, we can override this by saying by adding parentheses here. And now we are really going to get an answer that is consistent with the visual grouping. So now the answer is 7, and that's because this gets grouped together as 4 plus 3 equals 7. These get grouped together, and the 2 minus 1 gets evaluated first, and that's 1, of course, so 7 times 1 is 1. Here are your two exercises for this video. What you see here is uh, two exercises, and each one contains four numbers and three arithmetic operations. And I also give you two answers here. So what you need to do is write these expressions, write these equations into Python. Actually, not the whole equation, just the first part, just the left-hand side of this equation. And then figure out a way to add parentheses to make the following equations true. So you need to add parentheses wherever appropriate to get this first expression equal to 2 and this second expression equal to 0. So now is your opportunity to pause the video, switch to Python on your own, work through these two exercises, and then when you're finished, you can come back and watch me solve these problems. Okay, so let's add a new cell here. And let's start with the first one. So let's see, that one was 4 times 5 divided by 7 plus 3. So if we just run this on its own without any parentheses, then we get some answer. It's 5.85, whatever. This is definitely not equal to 2. So that means that the default order of operations is not going to give us the right answer. We need to add some parentheses. So there's essentially two ways you can go about solving this problem. One is you can just kind of randomly poke around and add parentheses wherever you feel like. You know, maybe here, and okay, that doesn't change anything. But that's not necessarily the best way to go about solving problems in math or in programming. A better way is to sit down and first think about what the answer should be. Now, in this case, we have only four numbers and three operations, so it's not so hard to try to do some mental grouping, mental arithmetic. So I know that the answer needs to be 2. And so looking through this, I can see 4 times 5 is 20. 7 plus 3 is 10. Okay, so we want to have an expression that equals 20 divided by 10. So it's pretty clear that we need to group these together. And then the question is, do we need to group the 4 and 5 together? Or can we just leave it like this? And to think about that, we can write down the PEMDAS. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And so here you see that multiplication comes before division. So that means that Python is going to group 4 times 5 together first, and then it's going to apply the division. So that means we don't actually need parentheses here in order to get the correct answer of 2. Now, this is already the correct answer. However, if this were my code, I would do a few other things. 
I would remove these spaces here so that it's really clear, not only to Python, but also to humans who are looking at this code, that this is grouped together in the denominator of this fraction. Secondly, I would also remove the spaces here, also just to make it clear that the four and five are clearly grouped together as the numerator. Okay, and now if you like, for additional readability, you can add parentheses to the numerator here. Notice, I'm gonna run this code again, that doesn't change anything because multiplication already came before division. However, I think you will agree that with the parentheses in the numerator, it just looks a little bit easier to parse compared to without the parentheses. All right, so that was the first one. Let's now try for the second one. That was nine divided by three plus six minus one. And somehow we have to get this to be equal to zero. And it is not equal to zero, it's equal to eight. So again, one thing you could do is just kind of, you know, randomly poke around and start adding parentheses here and there and see what happens. But I don't think that's really the best strategy. A better strategy is to just kind of look and be inquisitive about this problem and see if we can figure it out in our heads. So this is nine and then divided by three plus six. So if we group these together, we get nine divided by nine, which is one and then minus one, and that'll give us zero. So I'm going to put parentheses around here. Again, unnecessary spaces, but this helps visually group. And then we have a question of whether we need to put parentheses around all of this to make sure that Python will say nine times nine minus one, as opposed to nine divided by nine minus one. And the answer is we don't need parentheses because again, division comes before subtraction. So I believe that this will give us the right answer. Again, this is technically correct. If you like to remove some spaces to group these things together, then that's great. I definitely encourage that. So in this video, you learned the mnemonic, that's a memory trick, for the order of operations that was PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And I also highlighted the importance of spacing in Python for ease of visualization and parentheses for actual grouping in code.